Hey, what's up everybody? It's Royce from Pedal Metal. Welcome to my channel. Uh, today's video is going to be pretty comprehensive and I'm not entirely sure how bad this is going to be. I need to change the valve cover gaskets on my 2010 Volvo S80 V8. It uh, is dripping and it's getting worse and worse every day. And now when I purchased this car back in, what was that, end of March, early April, uh, I was able to get $2,100 off the car due to the fact that I, uh, when I took it for a test drive, they let me go by myself. I pulled the car over in a parking lot and I pulled the plastic decorative valve cover things off and I could see down in that it was dripping oil out or weeping, I should say, not real bad, but uh, enough that I kind of said something to him and the dealership knew full well what I was talking about. I purchased the car from a Volvo dealer and I just kind of basically said, look, this is you're talking $500 plus my labor to do this. And it also needed uh, brakes. I told them that when you go to brake, it had like a shimmy. So they, they put all new rotors and pads on, which that's like $600, if not more, plus labor uh, for those 13.3 inch uh, front rotors and the back rotors and all that good stuff. So he did that, but he said, we're not fixing the oil leak. That's up to you, but we'll take you know, $2,100 off. So that's where I'm at. And now it's getting the point. It's leaving pretty good uh, spots in the driveway. I'm hoping it's not coming from the timing cover. Uh, and I don't think it is. I'm pretty sure it's just the valve covers. So what I did is I went ahead and ordered the uh, valve cover gasket kit from FCP Euro. And if you're not familiar with them, be sure to check them out. Uh, uh, but anyway, I got the whole kit. And I'll show you, I'm going to swing around here and I'll show you, I have everything laid out on the floor and I'll show you what was in the kit, what wasn't in the kit. And I'm hoping I don't need the timing cover uh, gasket and all that crap because I don't feel like taking all the pulleys off the motor and all that good stuff. So we'll go ahead here and I'll show you what I got. Okay, what comes with the uh, $300 kit is you have your intake plenum uh, uh, gaskets or seals. And I'll let you guys can stop and zoom up if you have to, whatever on the parts numbers, or I'll, I'll put the link down below. Here you have the two large rubber gaskets with all the grommets. Uh, from what I understand, those grommets are very important. Uh, they do prevent it from being overly snugged down, I guess, the valve covers. So that's those two. And then you have more, uh, uh, what does it say, intake manifold. A gasket they're like a hard plastic I believe uh, the two hoses are PCV hoses and they get funky over age they say made in Germany or made in Germany yeah made in Japan on those so you're gonna need those these hoses alone are pretty expensive so it's best to just get the whole the whole kit that has uh, both of those hoses in there's the numbers um, and then it comes with four main Japan seals for the, I think it's for the PCCV. It's the variable timing. I think it's something like that. A solenoid, I think, for the, the uh, valve timing or something like that. Because at first I thought they put these in by accident or something. I don't remember them being in the kit, but you get four of those. They're like, looks like one inch ID. And then a power steering pump O-ring and I'm not sure what the number is for that. I had purchased on my own uh, a new fuel pressure sensor because from what I understand, when you have this all apart, it's best to just go ahead and, and change that while you're in there. A lot of people say you do the power steering pumps, but I don't, it looks so easy to get to the power steering pump being right on the top. I thought that's not really what I'm, I'm what I'm, plan on doing instead is changing the power steering pump reservoir. Uh, this has a built-in filter down in the bottom. What happens, they get clogged, those filters over time, and people think their power steering pump's gone because they start making noise. You get a pseudo cavitation, you get other kind of starvation noises from the pump. And uh, so I want to change that. This I actually was $61 off of Amazon. So that's a pretty good deal. It was a significantly less money than FCP wanted, I think by like $10 or more, $12. Uh, 
And, uh, and I went ahead and this was also optional. This was not in a kit in a Continental belt. That was from FCP. There's the part number for that. I'm going to check the other belt when I have everything apart. I'll probably just go ahead and do it. Uh, the other thing that didn't come with the kit was the O-ring uh, kit for this for the fuel injectors. They're probably going to be hard and brittle when I have to pull the fuel rail out. So I got this kit directly from China. It looks really nice. The tool's actually really well made. I used to just use a, a sheet metal screw to pull the screens out. But this kit for, I think it was like under $25 for everything, has the little filters in there for your fuel injectors. And I like to run them through the ultrasonic cleaner and uh, pull everything apart and redo them. If I get time, I wanna hopefully do them. Here is the uh, my order here of everything from FCP. If you need to uh, pause and get all the part numbers, that's that there. Uh, so anyway, we're gonna get the car pulled in the garage here and get cracking. All right, well, first we wanna get the the uh, air box out of here. What I want to do before I get too ahead of myself here is because we're, we're, we want to from what I understand from other members I've talked to that have done these, they said get rid of the top engine mount if you can. We need to get the reservoir bottle out of here, remove the pump, obviously the, the plastic cover right here, and then we can remo we'll remove the throttle body. I have a turkey baster out, and we're going to go ahead here and get rid of the uh, as much of this nasty fluid as it can. It, it is pretty bad. It's got a darker hue to it. I think it should be a little bit lighter blue color. Probably clamp this off if you have new fluid in your power steering or try to save it somehow. I probably would not do that. Uh, I did forget to show earlier uh, two other additional things I've been saving up parts to do this job as I have the spark plug. The spark plugs, which I got them off of uh, eBay, I think it was about $78 of free shipping. And I did get from FCP the CHF202 Pentasone, I think I said Pentasone, uh, power steering fluid, which is supposed to be really good Volvo grade stuff. So kind of got all this to do at the same time. So I did find two, did find two of the uh, flat nose type of uh, voice grips here. So I'm hoping I can use them to pinch off the hoses. Um, the pretty sure I had actual hose pinch off deals here but I don't know what I did with them I can't find them so I'll just give this a shot first all right now oh, this has those push fittings there okay I didn't see that earlier there's a like the Volkswagen style um, push in where you push the two pins in to get that out of there. Okay, that's not bad. But this filter, we'll have to cut it open maybe then. Oh, uh-oh. This is definitely probably full of gunk. Looks original. Got my handy dandy magnet to get that. It's a very valuable tool to have in your arsenal, that's for sure. I use that a lot. I don't think now I'm looking at this, I think we could just take, uh, I think it's like 315s, are they 15, 14, yeah, 13 millimeter. There's three of them there. I think we'll try that first and add another extension. I really don't want to bust my knuckles up if I don't have to. We'll take this engine brace off. Someone else said that that's a good idea. We'll do that. Yeah, good. We can get that up and out of the way. 
way. If I have to, I'll just remove it from the back side there. Cover it all the way. So here's your power steering pump is right here. Uh, does look like we have a little bit of a, a leak there at the hose. Okay, to remove this, this get the serpentine belt loosened, the tensioner, it's a 19 millimeter bolt down on the tensioner itself right here. So he's got to kind of get a breaker bar or something on it. And I know some videos people say you need to loosen all kinds of stuff under there. I think I was able to get in. Thankfully, I found a short 19 millimeter socket. I didn't think I had one, but you definitely need it. I just, with a Craftsman breaker bar, I just barely got the, uh, got this on there. All right, that's enough to, whew, to get that loose there. To pull the belt off. The belt actually doesn't look... The belt looks pretty good. I don't think I'm going to be dealing with changing that today. Take that hose off. Wow. Take off the upper intake. And I'm not sure what size Allen bolts they are, but they are hex. I need a hex uh, for that. So that is size size six hex socket you're gonna need. Don't know how many more bolts there is, but I'll we'll have to take a look. Can't really see back in there. Take that clip off there. Okay, I uh, thought I was filming there, but apparently I was not filming. I started working my way around getting the clips off the fuel injectors because I need to pull the the rail. Uh, that PCV hose, which runs right here, was so dry rod that busted off, but then I had to kind of work at it to get the, it off the nipple over here. Uh, next thing is to go ahead and try to get this wiggled out of here. I'm sure some injectors will stay in, some will probably come out. You probably wouldn't have to take those clips off, but I did it a while because I, I'm gonna end up pulling the injectors anyway and cleaning them. But if you're not gonna do that step, you wouldn't have to take those these uh, eight clips off there on each injector <clears throat> now see how that one the o-ring stuck up inside the fuel rail I have to get my little pick a lot of them are that way they're stuck up in there pretty nasty looking all right well I'm gonna work on getting the rest of the those other three injectors out and I'm gonna Go ahead and clean them. I do have a separate video uh, cleaning the ones from my Corrado, which if you do a search on my channel, it's gonna be very, very similar to, to these. So I won't do a video about how I clean them, but uh, we'll get, <laughs> we'll keep at it here. Okay, and then we're get cracking here. There's two really long bolts that run down through the top here that I almost missed earlier and I was pulling on it and I couldn't quite figure out why it wouldn't come out. Well, 
that's pretty crusty. leaking some oil down through in the middle here it's got some oil in the valley it looks like well I guess we could start on trying to get the back valve cover off first this does not look like it's gonna be much fun Now what you want to watch for is some of these have ground wires on there. Uh, what I did is ground down, uh, ground down an older, um, I don't even know where this came from, out of a Volkswagen Rabbit toolkit I think or something, but I, you want to ground down a 10 millimeter wrench so you can slide underneath the top nut so you don't tear the ground straps so what it'll fit get this hose out of the way here pretty nice how it'll fit underneath I got that tip from somebody online said about it ah dropped another one little 10 millimeter nuts down in there oh, that one I can should build a tree I can see it I think that's all the bolts for holding the front one. All right, well, we'll leave all this as is for right now, and I'll work on getting the back. The back one out next. All right, well, let's take a look and see where the, I don't know where my mirror on the stick is. It'd be nice to have that. I don't know how I'm going to get up in there. I'm going to probably crawl on top of the freaking car to get up in here. Okay, after fighting with this for almost an hour, I finally got the last, there's two studs in the back on the, the back valve cover. And they have the ground wires on. They look like this. They have, it's just a stud. And then it has a nut on top. And then your ground cable goes out. Well, you have two of those in the back. And I think it was, uh, what, two in the front as well. And they're, they are for uh, the four coil packs on each side. So this is where you want really need to have uh, a 10 millimeter wrench get in underneath of here uh, this one's not a good example show I just dropped mine underneath but you want to ground uh, down maybe a little bit thinner than this this one here might have worked but I couldn't get it in there so ground off some of a, like a cheap wrench that you might have an extra 10 millimeter and it works perfect then I just for whatever reason the one on the left side here I could not get it was a real Pain in a caboose there and now I just drop the wrench down in and I think it's on top of the tray because it's not underneath the car so I don't know where it is but I'm gonna need I probably will need it again this one here might work I, this is just a cheap uh, I think it's a Harbor Freight one I could grind grind that down if I have to if I can't retrieve the other but uh, anyway that's where I'm at and I'm getting right here to pull them out uh, get, I gotta get the coil packs out get them out of the way and then uh, we should be able to lift them out and it, it, this is a lot of work I, I somewhere I saw online they had it quoted for four hours to do this like for it was like a mechanics website there's there's no way I, I I'm 
it's got to, that's got to be for the inline uh, the five cylinder or six cylinder car or something. I don't know because there's there is no way in hell you're going to get this done in four hours. I probably have eight hours in this already now. I would say easily, and at least I'm kind of getting to the home stretch now. But there's no way. There's no way. I don't care how experienced you are. Ah, shit. Of a, how experienced you are as a mechanic. There's no way you're going to do this job in four hours. I've seen a lot of people online said it took them a whole weekend. I believe that. There's no doubt in my mind. There's no doubt that it's, it's going to take you a whole weekend. I luckily have an old pickup truck that I can drive in the, in the meantime. Uh, so this is in the garage. Crotto. I don't like being outside. I get poured down rain last night. I just don't. I don't like my car outside in the rain. So anyway, we'll get back to this. And I think I have everything pretty much moved out of the way. I think I want to do the back first, though, just because I'm leaning over here. I don't really want to. The thing that concerns me the most is getting this uh, the fuel these fuel lines out of the way back here. I'm kind of concerned about that. <sighs> Go ahead here. I actually had to lay across the, the engine too. I put a mat down and I laid across the engine so I could get to the back here. This is a, it's a, it's a horrendous job. I'm not going to lie. I think this, this is the average person. I don't, Think's gonna have the patience to do this. I just barely have the patience, mainly just because I'm cheap, and I don't feel like paying someone. It, this is probably a, this gotta be a, this has gotta be a two thousand dollar job, if not more, to do this because this is horrendously bad. I don't know how you get these quill how you get the quill packs out in the back here to if you want to change the spark plugs back here because the way they have the fuel. The fuel line's running here. I don't even see how you're supposed to get this stuff out of the way. I guess you just... This stuff is all dry rotted. Alright, let's go ahead and see if we can pop that sucker. Should be able to get it out of here. You have your cam sensors as well that you have to unplug, and then you don't want to break any of them off. I'm trying to pull this up out of there. <laughs> this is horrendous. What a dumb design. Actually, cool design. It's just stupid the way it's in here. Obviously, the wrong way. Oh my god, what an annoying job. There it is. Back one. What a pain in the ass. Front's not bad at all to do, really, because you can get to you can get to everything, but the back one is just a absolute disaster. All right, for the spark plugs, um, these all came pre-gapped. Now the problem is, I don't know if it's a problem or not, but they're at 0.44, and that's what they were on the the used ones I pulled out of the car. I also checked. Now on Sweet Speed and other sites, people are saying that they're supposed to be at 0.28. All mine are measuring about looks like 44. So, 
I'm going to leave them as is. I really don't want to be banging on these. The, the other ones I took out were all the same at around 43 to 45 range, mostly 44. So I'm going to think I'm just going to leave them as is. Uh, there was there didn't appear to be any anti seize on the threads on the original spark plugs, and I had a heck of a time getting out, getting them out on the front here. I didn't do the back bank yet, so unlike there's a real popular video on YouTube, and the guy does a spark plug change on one of these. He does not use any anti seize at all. I would not recommend that. I would definitely put a little bit of uh, anti seize. I just have it's Permatex stuff I've been using for years. Um, just put a little bit of that on the threads, and you should be good to go. Uh, and I would torque them down to 18 foot pounds, or it's 216 inches. Uh, my little torque wrench, I did have the quarter inch. I looked at it, and it goes up to 200 inch uh, pounds or inch inches inch pounds i guess it would be yeah inch pounds uh so i went to my half inch which is i have it set for 18 foot pounds so we should be good because someone else said do not use some of the websites say that you go to i think it was like 23 pounds or something like that and people said don't do that just stick with uh just stick with 18 foot pounds I like this spark plug wrench. I got the, the socket. I think I got this off of FCP. It's nice, but it no longer grips. I think it was supposed to have a magnet up in there and a little rubber grommet. It's basically it's a 15 millimeter socket, long socket, but I just use a magnet usually to get them started because I can't, that socket there kind of, I don't know why it doesn't work anymore. Yeah, I had a heck of a time getting a couple of these out. I'm not sure if I have it on video or not, but I did not like the feel of that. I thought they were going to break off. Okay, that clicked. So that feels that feels perfect at 18 foot-pounds. Just the way it feels. feels really good. I got the first cover done. You may have seen with the head camera I had on. Got everything cleaned up. I got the two... Uh, CVVT solenoid seals in the main valve cover seal in and we're gonna go ahead and put this back on because the way I'm gonna be leaning over to the back I thought maybe I better just go ahead and do the the front first I didn't go too crazy clean these covers up I'd still like to go over them a little bit here then but I'm sure they'll just get dirty again anyway all right, here's a tip. When you're putting this cover back on over top of these sensors here, the timing cam sensors, uh, be very careful with these seals. Both of my springs had popped out on the seal. Um, so I took everything back apart. I think the mistake I made was leaving this ring attached. I think the best thing would be to have that well, probably the best thing would be to put the valve covers on and then the seals and then these rings. Uh, I didn't realize how bad this was going to be to put these back on. I just figured I would put the seals on the can on the valve covers while it's all off the car. But I think it's actually been a lot easier to press them on and uh, you know use a little bit of lube. But those inner springs, which looks like these here, this is what popped popped out these little little springs it's pretty important uh so i don't have one on the front this one of them has a spring and the other does and i'm gonna have to go back and eventually if it starts leaking there i'm gonna have to fix that but it's should be okay for now because it's flexible and the others still actually the ones with 125,000 miles, actually 128,000 miles seem fine, but I thought I'd change them a while. At least these you can get to when everything's together on the motor, so it's not a huge deal right now to me. I'll probably end up. I'm I'm hoping I don't screw up the ones for the back there. 
so I'll have to order one new one because I it's an exercise in freaking mental stability I don't know I I just pissed with it for about an hour trying to get the spring back and I just gave up it's just too it's just too difficult and this job is uh, very long and tedious I'm getting really tired of working on it already and it's only been about two days all right now I gotta remember which bolts go there I don't remember all of them which is not a good thing this is where I should have I should have labeled everything all my hardware which was not a good thing I should not have done what I did there and I'm pretty sure it's all these up here though and to torque these down I believe it's what I read online was 14 foot pounds of torque I'll double check on that and I'll put it on the screen all right well this should be fun don't want to drop any more of these grommet things because I did not anticipate crawling underneath the car but I dropped the one earlier so Oh, those actually went on pretty easy. I just used the pick to kind of go around the edge to make sure that flange or little lip uh, seats correctly around this sensor. All right. And you also you want to make sure, double check your, make sure the valve cover, gasket, nothing's pinched or anything like that or twisted gonna be hard to see and I can't find my good inspection mirror I don't know what in the world happened to it so gonna make do with this and clean this off this is horrendously bad uh, make do with what you have I guess the valve cover bolts I looked again online at seven foot pounds or what I did is I used 84 inch pounds on my little torque wrench so seven foot pounds or 84 inch pounds for those and i did go in a crisscross pattern and then when i did the fronts but i've just been just lightly going around using this swivel tool well it's not working as well on the back here though I all right, I got the uh, both valve covers on, all the miscellaneous hardware to hold uh, the fuel injection pieces and whatnot. I'm not sure about this one here where that goes yet. I'll have to figure that out then. Uh, cleaned out the PCV valve. That's one thing I kind of regret not buying that ahead of time. Mine doesn't look bad at all. So I kind of just sprayed out with some mass airflow uh, sensor cleaner and kind of picked at it a little bit and it doesn't look that bad but i will probably eventually get a new one of those uh, i went ahead with 3m electrical tape and went on all the wire conduit here the uh, loom that was all brittle and dry rotted i have new coming today in the mail from amazon or at least it's supposed to show up today not sure i have a feeling looking at this it's not going to work anyway i think it might be a little too small but it looks like this stuff here that's used on the japanese hoses it has the black nylon uh, coating on it which it should be pretty decent i think i'll hit underneath here though i missed a little section the back wires don't look bad i got all the new spark plugs in coil packs on the next thing i want to do is put the injectors in and then we could probably drop the lower case or the lower uh, intake plenum in which i did clean uh, make sure you have a piece of cardboard or something in the valley of the motor here you don't want to drop anything in there that would that would not be a good thing um, actually as we're working here let's just put it we'll do this we'll put it on one side we'll go one half just because just because I'm paranoid, I don't really want to drop anything down in there. 
Uh, All right, I found my Vaseline. This is stuff I just, what I keep out here in the garage. Otherwise, uh, wife will throw a fit if I grab it from in the house, which I've done that before, and I usually get yelled at. <laughs> so we're just going to go ahead here and do one at a time. But I want to put a little bit of a little bit of lube on uh, those O rings. We're gonna have to dig those gaskets out. We're gonna be dropping that on here any second. I don't know if they're the same part number. Let me see. I think they are. Yeah, they're the same. There's they're the same part number, so they are reversible. And there is a little stud here and here that kind of helps you position them. But these are pretty important. I mean, you could probably cheap out. I know some of the LS1 guys supposedly reuse theirs, but I don't. I mean, I already went ahead and got it all as a whole kit, so it really didn't matter to me about trying to be cheap and reuse parts. I cleaned up the the lower intake manifold using 180 degree hot water, soaked it in my slop sink, and it came out pretty decent compared to, to what it was. I mean, it wasn't really bad of carbon. Uh, I do have some pictures before I cleaned it on Instagram. It wasn't bad, but uh, it definitely looks better now. I'm trying to see here, I wanna make sure I have this uh, correct orientation it looks like I do so I make sure here I probably should have put that on first and then well we'll see here how bad this is gonna be uh, with the injectors seem to me like they're kind of like in the way just got to kind of work around them a little bit moving along here with the bolts I'm not sure these long ones, I don't think they go here or anywhere else. This is why I should have marked, I really should have marked uh, these tubs out better. Crockett and tubs, which, uh, what went where. So don't do what I just did. Make, sh make sure you mark what went where. I, ha I did have a pattern laid out left to right here, but sometimes especially when you walk away it's very very easy to screw up and forget what went where so it's eight of these i believe snugging these down for right now but i want to go in a lightly sung them now i'm going to go in a crisscross pattern then uh, according to the internet doesn't mean it's correct but it is 14 pounds for the intake manifold, upper and lower, which is not much. So you can't really go wrong with that. I think I got all bolts. It looks like I don't think I'm missing anything. I'm not sure what goes there. If that was for, oh, that's for the end ones for the, the there's one on the end that's a, for the bracket for the uh, power steering pump. All right, so we got to snug this down 14. So we're gonna go up to the one, go to the 160 line. Okay, right there's one, 160 and then go over eight. Okay. Okay, it's 14, 14 pounds. I do have the two new PCV hoses. This one goes like that, which we will probably should do those first. And yeah, my, my hoses, they were pretty bad, especially the short one was hard as a rock. So you gotta, 
you're gonna have to definitely I would replace those but if you buy the whole kit then you, you can't go wrong all right so the best bet is to probably put the injectors in last with the fuel rail these clips I know a lot of people say they're horrible to do and they're a pain and they bounce off I didn't have any bounce off right there that one's not on but you'll know it there's a flat spot on this bronze colored the, the metal rail itself that flat spot has to match up with the flat spot on the clip like this one doesn't look like I have it quite right so and it will make a nice audible click that one I think I just have this one a little crooked but it has to be flat spot to flat spot and then the connector is going to be on the opposite end of the clip if that makes any sense that one's on it just didn't make a click like some of the other ones but it's definitely on it looks like I do have one broken clip for the the injector uh, electrical lines there unfortunately but all right now I'm gonna go ahead and try to get this push down in there which is probably not gonna be much fun everything looks good so far I can put this hose back on so I'm not sure exactly how that went I think it was like that okay well I figured out where this the end of this the fuel injection line goes it's 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 got three prongs to it and uh, I was looking all over the place and I could not find it here it's in on the back of the upper uh, intake and I feel kind of stupid now because I even looked at it I flipped it over but I missed it so anyway, I got everything plugged in, uh, new fuel pressure sensor in there. No fuel does come out, and I didn't have any fuel come out. Um, a lot of people say you need to drain this and that, and same with the antifreeze. I didn't drain any of the antifreeze down. I did lose a little bit of coolant here around where the, uh, up, up in here a little bit came out, but not, not enough to, I wouldn't worry about draining the coolant like the internet tells you to do. I didn't have to. Uh, in the front here, I figured out I did have two different, the wrong bolts here. That should have been these little ones with the nipples on. They hold the uh, plastic decorative cover on then. So that was not a big deal. I pulled those out and then I used those up here at the, for the end. The, well, I was missing one bolt for the injector rail. Uh, they're all pretty much look like this. They're the same as what holds the uh, fuel pressure sensor as well. They're the same, they're like about a half inch long. They're used throughout this project quite a bit. Same with that. I think the other one goes to the down there is a bracket for uh, the power steering pump. So we'll go ahead here and I think what we could do is put the power steering pump, sit that in place a while. I think I'm gonna have to use the magnetic tool to get this bolt down in there. Snugging them down tight. I don't know what the torque specs for those are, but you don't want to get certainly don't want to get too carried away. And there is another bolt down at the bottom, which I remember that being a pain in the butt because I couldn't find that originally. I'm like, why is this not coming off? So now he's got to put that one down through the back there and I remember it being a pain in the butt just fish it through there sometimes I'll put a little bit of gummy which I think I might do that right now a little bit of gummy tape or something to get it to stick to the socket just enough so I can get it to hold it and get it down in there
Now the O-ring they gave me said for the power steering pump, but it doesn't make any sense to me. This thing's like huge. It's in one inch. It's one inches across. So I don't know exactly what the deal was with that. Where was that supposed to go? Maybe right here. I bet. I bet that was supposed to go down in there. But I don't. I don't need it. And there is a little green O-ring on this side. Which I probably could put a little bit of lube on that. There we go. All right. Can take that off. Ooh, on the home stretch, I think. I'm hoping. So this plugs in back here. What a pain in the butt to get those hoses on back under up underneath of here are an absolute disaster. Uh, I'm not gonna lie, this whole job has been a big, big pain in the caboose. But I think I'm on on the home stretch here. Okay, these four long Allen bolts go down through here if I remember correctly. And then we have a whole bunch more Allen bolts. I think it's 20 in total that go surrounding there and I don't I think I'm good to go. I don't think I have anything pinched. Okay, um just got done wrapping this up and literally wrapping no uh what I did I went ahead and uh I went in pretty much all this it looked like this stuff originally, but I think it was one inch diameter, uh, hard plastic conduit or wrap loom stuff for wiring. It was all dry and brittle for the uh, wires that go to the coil packs. So I got rid of all that as best I could. Um, and when I was working on it yesterday, the uh, mailman showed up with the loom, this stuff here from Amazon. And I'll put the link down below. It seems to be pretty good stuff I think it's for one inch but it wraps around almost two times so I think you could use it and it's very similar to this factory hard plastic uh, Japanese style stuff that's on the hoses and uh, so I put that all on and I had some of this other I don't know what size this is the hard plastic stuff I got off eBay a long time ago I'll see if Amazon has and I'll put the link down below I am an affiliate member so anything you purchase, I get basically a few pennies for each thing you order. Um, no big deal. But anyway, so I tidied that all up. I think it looks a lot better. I wrapped all the wire in 3M electrical tape first, and then I put the sheeting on top. So, oh, one other piece of advice. I'm not sure if I mentioned this or not earlier. I didn't drain the cool one out. I don't know why, but everyone on the Internet says when you do this, you have to drain the coolant, which makes no sense to me. Uh, I mean, it'd probably be a good time to do it and you could. I had just a little bit come out. I think the, I think one of these, I think it's this line here. Uh, one of them, a little bit of coolant came out, but I pinched them off with the needle nose. Can't think of the vice grips or whatever. And, but I, I don't understand. I mean, I might have to, I'm, I, I need to get a bottle, probably have distilled water, and just probably keep an eye on the bottle and just add to it if I have to. But not much came out. So my advice is I wouldn't do it unless you really want to change your engine coolant. I would not deal with that. It's another freaking step you got to do, and I, would, I wouldn't even worry about it. I think you could do it in 16 hours if you busted your rump and worked through it, maybe 12 to 14 hours maybe. Uh, but definitely one day to take it all apart and three quarters of a day to put it back together. But and I did spend time doing the spark plugs and the fuel injectors and all that. So I lost like half a day with that stuff. And then also hot tanked or put the intakes in 180 degree uh, water temperature in my slop sink in the basement and scrub the bejesus out of all that. And I got a lot of stuff out of it. I don't know if it really did anything, but you know, I'm sure it couldn't hurt. 
So all in all, I think anyone with a little bit of knowledge with tools could do this. The bad thing is now I got to pull the car out of the garage here, put up on ramps and take that freaking tray off from underneath and, and get the, I dropped a whole bunch of 10 millimeter sockets. I think there's two, three under that, I swear. Luckily I had backups here. I love the sound this thing makes, especially in the garage. Oh, it's doing that again. Hopefully that doesn't become a... One message. That scared me that when it acted like it didn't want to start there. No vehicle messages, so that's good. To write this down on my log, 128,000 miles. We did all the fun stuff that no one really wants to do to them. But, I mean, that probably should have been done at 100,000 miles. From my understanding, these vehicles need to have that, the valve cover gas, it's gasket job done every 100,000 miles. Because they, it was, they were pretty hard. Uh, and just from the high heat, I got to open the garage door up. Seems to be running all right. Nice crackles. So to summarize, all, all in all, I would I would have to say I'm making this longer than it needs to be. This video is going to be long, and I'm, I apologize for that. But there's some guys out there who've never done this before, like myself. I didn't know, I never did before either. So uh, it was all new to me, and I didn't want to overly rush it. But my main advice, the other main advice I should say, uh, is to have label each thing is you take it off. I, I had little containers out here from a Cracker Barrel or whatever little take home containers. Dummy me forgot to label everything. Now many of the bolts are similar. Obviously the hex head uh, uh, cap bolts or whatever, socket cap head bolts, whatever. The ones for the intake, those you know they're for the upper intake. It's not that hard to get them mixed up or anything, but there's a lot of other 10 millimeter bolts that you could easily get mixed up if you're not careful. I actually was left with a couple extra little ones, embarrassing enough to say, but I don't think they were uh, anything in, in anything that's super important because I triple checked all my work and uh, I know there's a little bracket I need to put on over there that holds the one hose coming up for the power steering pump. Just debating if I want to put that front plastic decorative cover back on the front there. I don't think I'm gonna. I think I'm gonna leave them off. And I probably, I wish I would have had more time. I would have cleaned up the valve covers and I was thinking of painting them like gloss black or something, but my luck, the paint would probably start peeling anyway in no time. The, all the, the amount of heat that's under here is crazy. Uh, and oh, the other advice is the CVVT seals. I think I, I will go over this in the one part of the video. I would probably put the valve covers on and then press them in and install them on. And if you're not, if you don't remember which ones I'm talking about, it's these guys here. It's four of those seals. I would, I would probably push them, push them on after you install this because it was really hard to get them over those stems. Um, maybe you guys won't have as much, you know, bad luck. I even sprayed some silicone on them. There's one here here and then there's two in the back obviously since it's four cams but uh all in all not too bad i guess just a pain i'm glad it's over with all right so thanks for watching uh if you, if you guys like if you guys like this type of video make sure 
uh, give me a thumbs up if it's helped you. You can donate. Uh, I have a little button there. You can donate some cash that goes all back to the, to the uh, channel and uh, all that good stuff. Be sure if you do subscribe and you're new, so hit the bell for notifications. And I will see you guys later. All right. Thanks for watching. See you now. Bye. See you guys later. Bye.